And today I will be talking about engineering biofilm architecture for efficient light utilization. So why we use uh, microalgae for biofuels production? The idea behind doing this is very simple. We can use uh, CO2, water, and sunlight to produce a wide variety of different compounds, starting from alcohols and ending with hydrogen. In our group in Turku University, we are working with producers of uh, sucrose, for example, ethylene and hydrogen, and some other compounds. So uh, ethylene and sucrose are produced thanks to the basic reaction of photosynthesis, capturing of CO2, and accumulation of carbon-enriched compounds, like ethylene and sucrose. While hydrogen production requires a special conditions, uh, the reaction typically occurs under anaerobic conditions, and some green algae and cyanobacteria can split water and using the sunlight and produce hydrogen and oxygen. Why we are interested in the hydrogen production? Because hydrogen as a biofuel has the highest energy content and zero carbon release index. This is ideal uh, energy career for sustainable economy. So, uh, and there are advantages and disadvantages of using microalgae for biofuel production. Among advantages, I would like to uh, say that we can first uh, uh, introduce different metabolic pathways uh, using a wide variety of molecular engineer, engineering techniques, uh, and we uh, can s increase the efficiency of biofuel production and production of our other chemicals. The second advantage that solubility of CO2 in water is quite higher, and because of that, pr photosynthetic productivity of microalgae is higher than uh, land plants. Uh, also, we can use uh, a bi and bioproduction bio of fuels usually occurs in the stationary phase, and because of that, we can uh, redirect the energy captured by the cells in, in the form of sunlight to production of the more efficient production of the biofuels. Of course, there are some disadvantages like uh, two of them uh, associated with water, actually, the topic of the current se section. So uh, algae cultivation requires a lot of water, and we are trying to solve this pro problem by immobilization of the cells in thin uh, biocatalytic structures. And the second problem is quite expensive separation of the biomass from the water, if we need to produce biodiesel, for example, we can accumulate the biomass and then process this biomass to biofuels like biodiesel and biohydrogen. But the most common problem that we occurs in the suspension cultures of microalgae is the low light utilization efficiency. Why we have this problem? Because uh, um, Photosynthetic organisms develop the huge photosynthetic antenna complexes. These photosynthetic antenna complex, uh, complexes enable the cells to survive under the low light environment. As a result, you can see that photosynthesis for most of the organisms uh, saturates at very low light intensity, like around uh, approximately 200, 300 micromoles of photons per square meter per second. And uh, huge uh, photosynthetic an antenna complexes uh, bring the significant problem during the cultivation of the algae in the photobioreactors. Here you can see the attenuation of the light energy in the bioreactor. And because of the sh shading effect, the cells, the cultures form the dark zone inside of the bioreactor. And presence of this dark zone uh, decrease the productivity of the bioreactor because the cells will not uh, photosynthesize efficiently in this area because not uh, enough light for doing this. So in the highest, so this problem is not very pronounced in the low sun density cultures, but it becomes very significant in the highest sun density cultures after the growth period 
you can see quite fast attenuation of the light and low productivity. Here you can see the decline in the productivity inside of the bioreactor with the increase of the biomass in the bioreactor. So uh, you can say me that we can solve this problem by increasing the light intensity. Indeed, we can improve uh, some productivity towards of the bio biomass by bring, bringing more light to the bioreactor. <coughs> but this brings another problem. Uh, too much light is also not very good for photosynthesis, and as a result, we have increase in the photoinhibitor zone inside of the bioreactor. As a result, the total productivity towards your final product is not very efficient. And there are two possible solutions for this problem. So the first solution is obvious. We can cultivate the algae in filar bioreactors. And these bioreactors does exist, and they produce quite a lot of the biomass, for example. But a uh, simple estimation of the uh, loss of the energy inside of the bioreactor gives us idea that we have to produce the very thin bioreactors for the most efficient process uh, with optical path below one centimeter, but better if we produce the bioreactor around half of the centimeter. So uh, this significantly increase the production cost of the bioreactors and also the maintenance cost of this bioreactor. And we decided to go in the different way for solving this problem. We are trying to uh, make the catalyst the most efficient for light utilization. We uh, bring the cells inside uh, the immobilization matrix and where uh, the cells because of the higher cell density will not divide. And in that case, we can redirect the light energy towards production of the biofuels, including like hydrogen. And the cells will not divide here. There is no production of the biomass. So uh, I started working with the thin layer immobilization in 2008. Uh, in National Renewable Energy Laboratory, where we try to improve the light utilization efficiency and production of the hydrogen. We tried different materials like latexes, alginates, and other compounds, but alginates works, works the best, and therefore we, we start making the biofilms using alginate first. The technique is very simple. We uh, collect the cells, mix them uh, with the alginate, and then uh, make the very thin uh, films and stabilize these films with the applying of the calcium, solidify the films, so this bring the additional uh, stability to the structure, and then produce hydrogen or other biofuels using the sunlight in the bioreactor, and then they, they estimate the production efficiency. What, and what we learn from this system that Decreasing the thickness of the catalyst uh, brings uh, efficiency, uh, more efficient production of the hydrogen. So uh, we need to produce the biofilms with the thickness below 100 microns. But at that point, we cannot do this using our techniques. Another disadvantage of using, of using alginate is that uh, it's not very mechanically stable. And uh, also, it's degrading the presence of chelating agents like phosphates. That, that is why we cannot use this material for wastewater treatment, for example. So this is uh, one of the, our recent examples of ethylene production by specifically engineer, uh, engineered cyanobacterium sinicocystis, where we bring the FE uh, enzyme to produce ethylene. So uh, we uh, confine the, the, the cells within thin uh, alginate matrix, and we demonstrated the multiple cycles, cycles of ethylene production. And, do, and we significantly extend the duration of the production process up to almost one month, more than one month, month actually. We calculated the efficiency of this production uh, system and found that the efficiency was 
in most cases was around 0.5%, not very efficient uh, still. Uh, and I have to um, remind you that the phot photosynthetic efficiency, the theoretical maximum is around 15%. So, and for production, real production system, we need efficiency around 6%, at least at half of this value. So, then uh, we decided to, uh, um, to engineer the structure of the biofilms for the better light utilization, because in most our biofilms, we had low productivity, low uh, light utiliz utilization efficiency. So, uh, we work with the the traditional uh, biofilms, which uh, contains uh, the cells of different sizes, different activities, which are in the different uh, physiological states. And during the first step of the engineering, we decided to bring in, into the matrix only the cells that, that have highest photosynthetic activity. And in the next step, we want to make uh, the structure with truncation of photosynthetic antenna complexes with the low uh, uh, antenna sizes at top of the films. So this, will, this should efficiently distribute uh, the light within the, th within the film and increase the final production efficiency of the biocatalyst. And at the first stage of the uh, immobilization, we have to uh, bring the new uh, matrix, which is more porous and more mechanically stable. So uh, before uh, going to the engineering step, I, because I will be talking mainly about the hydrogen production using the green algae, so I have to introduce you shortly how the cells produce hydrogen. This is because uh, they uh, induce uh, we, in our group, we are working mainly with green algae Chlamydomonas reinhardtii. And in this organism, uh, under anaerobic conditions, the cells induce hydrogenase enzyme, which uh, can reduce protons of the water uh, to molecular hydrogen. So uh, the enzyme interacts with the photosynthetic electron transport chain at the telocoin membrane of the chloroplast and the cells split water and simultaneously can produce hydrogen. So the first uh, protocol which was introduced uh, for initiation of hydrogen production in green algae was introduced by Hans Hafran a long time ago in 1942. So, but we still use this protocol. The, the process is very simple. So uh, we accumulate the biomass, and then duck adapt them under anaerobic conditions. And on the exposure of the light, the cells start to produce hydrogen. And here you can see the results of such experiment. You can see the increase in the hydrogen production. But after the period when the cells accumulate oxygen in the cultures, the cells stop producing hydrogen. Why? Because hydrogenase is extremely oxygen sensitive enzyme. And because uh, in the photosynthetic process, we also split water and produce oxygen, oxygen accumulates in the cultures and simply inhibits the hydrogenase enzyme. As a result, uh, the production of hydrogen stops. The process is extremely efficient. And if we learn how to sustain it, we definitely can produce hydrogen uh, in the industrial applications. So, and uh, to extend the period of hydrogen production, the, another protocol was introduced. It's a sulfur deprivation. So the sulfur deprivation of the cultures results in the decrease of uh, photosynthetic activity. The cells uh, lose the uh, photos photosystem two reaction centers. And because of that, they stop producing oxygen efficiently. The oxygen production declines. Um, and because uh, the respiration rate becomes higher than photosynthetic oxygen production, the cells establish anaerobiosis in the cultures and produce hydrogen for several days already compared to the first uh, protocol that I introduced. So, and we learn from the sulfur deprivation 
uh, sulfur deprivation uh, uh, mechanism of hydrogen production in the uh, in the green algae. So the electrons for hydrogen production are supplied above uh, photosystem two, as well as by the degradation of the starch, which is accumulated during the early stage of photosynthesis before degradation of the photosynthetic apparatus. So, but the most efficient process is the, uh, is the water splitting by photosystem two, and this will give our, our system the highest rate of hydrogen production. Unfortunately, as I said, this, the process is still uh, oxygen sensitive, but in sulfur deprived cultures, because the cells accumulate huge amount of the starch, this starch is used for respiration and respire the residual oxygen in the cultures. As a result, the cells produce hydrogen for several days. So uh, now we are going back to the engineering steps in the, uh, in the uh, engineering of the architecture of biocatalytic architecture. So uh, we are going to the first step in the engineering process. So how can we stop biomass formation in the algal cultures? We need this uh, to introduce the cells with the highest photosynthetic activity. And we learned this uh, how to do based on the cell cycle of the green algae. We know if you grow the cells at the, uh, under the photo period conditions, this, we know that the cells during the light phase ac uh, accumulate energy and they start dividing uh, during the dark, oh, it's funny. Uh, during the duck phase. So, and there is a commitment point. If we stress the cells before the commitment point, the cells may not go to the cell division. But after the commitment point, if we stress the cells by, for example, nutrient deprivation or other stress, the cells start dividing, continue dividing, even if the, there is not much energy left. So, and we know that if we harvest the cells, uh, somewhere in the middle of the light phase before the commitment point. In that case, the cells will not divide and we can introduce the, these cells into the matrix. So here you can see, for example, uh, if the sulfur deprived cells uh, and harvested at plus four hours after the start of the illumination, the cells uh, will not divide. But oppositely, if there is enough sulfur, the cells divide and you, here, here you can see uh, the, the daughter cells within the mother cells. So these uh, cells could not be intro introduced into the matrix because they will have very low photochemical activity. So, and the results of this experiment are shown on the next slide. So here you can see that introduction of the cells with the highest photosynthetic activity into the matrix indeed significantly improved the, the rate, specific rate of the hydrogen production as, the, as, was, as well as the final yield improved as well. So you can see this is a biofilms uh, with different photochemical activity. You see the decline in photochemical activity during the sulfur deprivation in the unsynchronized cells in the normal culture and then recovery uh, of this uh, photochemical activity on the addition of sulfur. And you can see that uh, synchronized cells uh, perform much better. They do not lose the photochemical activity uh, as uh, high as in the uh, traditional cultures, and then they recover photosynthetic apparatus much faster. And this is results in the high yield of the hydrogen in this system. So in the next step of the uh, immobilization of the biocatalyst for better light utilization, as I said, we have to introduce uh, the multi-layer structure with the top layer having the low uh, or lowest, low, lowest um, uh, photosynthetic antenna. So we have the series of the mutants uh, in Lamidomonas reinhardti, which have different levels of truncation of photosynthetic antenna. You can see here, this is the same light, but light is much better distributed 
in the uh, cultures with the photosynthetic uh, truncation antenna, truncated antenna. So uh, this is the same cell density culture. So this is the same amount of the cells in the in the tubes, but the light is better distributed uh, in the truncated antenna mutant cultures. So uh, and the idea was just can you can simply imagine if we apply the light from this side, the light will penetrate much better and the overall efficiency of this system should improve. The same principle will work in the film as well. And after uh, making the double layer structure, we, we definitely show much improvement in the yield of the hydrogen production as well as in the specific rate of the process. In the engineer uh, uh, biofilm structure with the uh, uh, truncated antenna mutant at the top of the wild type strain. And we uh, increased the efficiency of the production uh, to approximately 4%. I have to say that uh, typical uh, suspension cultures produce hydrogen with efficiency of around 0.3%. This is much improvement in the maximum uh, uh, efficiency of the process, which observed during this phase somewhere. So, but uh, overall efficiency was around 0.5% for the whole system. So, and at the next step, step of, the, uh, of the engineering, we decided to bring the new matrix. And here we started a collaboration uh, with Tecla, a group from VTT, and uh, and we were interested in the nanocellulose. Why I don't think I need to introduce the properties of uh, nanocellulose to this community, but for us, it's very important that we can tune the matrix further for better porosity and uh, for better mechanical stability. Uh, and the important feature of the nanocellulose that uh, we can produce both self-standing film after the partial drying and cross-linking with PVA, and also the hydrogel structures similar to uh, alginate films uh, by applying the calcium, for example. And we can easily uh, produce the multi-layer structure uh, using the coating machine. And now we can control the process and produce biofilms with the thickness of around uh, starting from 50 microns to uh, 300 microns easily. And what we notice with the nanocellulose introduction as a matrix, significant improvement in the duration of the process first, and our engineer structure produce hydrogen more efficiently. You can see here that we reach almost, we are very close actually to one molar of hydrogen per square meter, unfortunately only after two weeks. So we have to further improve uh, the system somehow to make it uh, feasible for industrial applications, at least for the small scale industrial applications. And as a conclusion, I would like to show you that we calculated the efficiency of the hydrogen production uh, in this engineer structure with nanocellulose, and we, at the maximum rate, uh, at the, um, in the engineer structure, the maximum efficiency what we get was around 4% in the nanocellulose matri matrices, uh, very close to the engineer structure of alginate. This means that this uh, efficiency is limited by the cells itself. But if we are talking about the long-term process, here nanocellulose bring a much better performance of the final catalyst, engineer catalyst. We got around 4.5% of the efficiency for the long-term process. And this is highest reported for this system at this point, for sulfur deprived system in particular. So the introduction of nanocellulose uh, give us the better opportunity for engineering this structure further. And I would like to thank all the people who, was, who were involved uh, in this project. Uh, the head of our group, uh, Professor Yagut Alakhverdiva, 
the part of this uh, project was done in the tight collaboration with, within our Futura Leaf community, and special thanks to uh, Tecla Tamilin group uh, for providing uh, an in, of the nanocellulose and engineering the structure for better performance. And uh, this uh, work was supported uh, by different uh, funding agencies. And thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>